guess what? It's the eco-friendly challenge. What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Miss Flips. In today's episode, I am hosting my first ever challenge. That is right. We have so many YouTube participants in this challenge. If you guys are interested in checking out the playlist, make sure to include the link below. So many talented people. I cannot wait for you guys to see them. In today's challenge, there are pretty much no rules other than the fact that you have to do the most eco-friendly methods that you possibly can. The person who wins the challenge is of course going to be whoever does the most eco-friendly flip possible, but we are also looking for creativity and new things that, you know, all of us didn't know, so it's gonna be great. But anyways, shall we see what I'm flipping today? Let's get to it. All right, gang, so this is the beautiful piece that I'm gonna be working on today. I got it off of Facebook Marketplace for $50. It had been sitting on Facebook for quite some time, and I was just watching it, seeing if anybody was going to snatch it up, and they didn't. And I've kind of been wanting to restore a piece for quite some time, and this was definitely the perfect piece if I wanted to do something that was going to be mainly on the challenging side of things. I've been told that this was used as a changing table, that's why there's a bunch of baby powder in the drawers, and it was also used as a teenager's vanity, so obviously those two things don't yield for a lot of uh, care and upkeep on a piece like this. So I thought that it was the perfect piece to show you guys how to restore a piece of furniture using some pretty eco-friendly methods. So restoring furniture is honestly the most eco-friendly method to flipping furniture because you're oftentimes not using any paint, you're just restoring the wood to its natural state. And in my process, I'm going to show you guys an even eco-friendlier way to do that with just using wax and no stain involved at all. So the first step of this piece is going to be just to clean it. So in order to clean this really well, I have to take off all of this damaged backing here and get into all of the spaces that have been untouched for so long. I try to use wood and extra materials that I have from past projects as much as I possibly can and I just so happen to have these dowels from a wine rack that I made not too long ago and they fit perfectly. I was so happy that I didn't have to go and buy new wood and so I was just able to hammer them in there, saw it off, and then sand them down so that they were flush with the rest of the top. Reusing materials is not only a good way to help the environment, but it's also a great way to save money, and I'm going to show you guys several elements that I use within this video to do just that. When cleaning my pieces, I always like to start off with vacuuming, and this just helps get up any of the cobwebs and dust that's been left behind by previous owners. And then when it comes to actually like cleaning cleaning, I always use a reusable cloth and vinegar and a water solution. And honestly, this combo works just as good as any cleaner that I've ever used. So I highly recommend doing that. It is so much better for the environment than any other cleaner that you can get, especially ones that come in plastic bottles. The majority of store-bought soaps and cleaners are usually primarily water anyway. So in fact, using this method also saves you money in the long run.
Heat guns are absolutely amazing for picking up goo like this, but they're also good for picking up stain. As you can see, while I've been getting up whatever this was, it also started picking up the leftover stain. And this is a great alternative for furniture stripping if you're looking to strip paint or a finish. A heat gun is a great way to do that. It is honestly a lot more satisfying than stripper, for me at least. And also you're not using any chemicals, any hazardous things that you have to deal with. So you save on gloves, you save on the chemical itself, you save plastic, all that good stuff. So I highly recommend using a heat gun for any removal that you have to do um, with furniture. Someone had obviously tried to uh, keep this dresser intact before, but they didn't really do a nice job doing it. So I just went in there and got off all of the leftover residue from the glue that they put on the dovetails. And that way we could see all the details in the dovetail drawers and uh, all that lovely wood grain that's on the side there. I got this sponge sander pad off of Amazon and I was kind of hoping that it would be like a like a poor man's uh, surf prep sander, you know? Because <laughs> let's face it, those things are mighty expensive. So uh, yeah, and it honestly worked really well. I was very impressed with the detail that I was able to get. Although I don't think it worked as well as the surf prep because I've heard that they don't even uh, sand down any of the detailing. With this sponge, it kind of got rid of a little bit of the ridges, um, but not as much as it would have if I were to go in with just my orbital sander. So I was genuinely pleased. I'll make sure to include the link for these guys in the description below if you are interested in getting them. Um, but yeah, so a great way to include eco-friendly methods when it comes to sanding is to invest in some reusable sandpaper. This stuff isn't, you know, technically reusable. For me, in my experience, it just lasts way, way longer. And here, as you can see, is a great example of how I was able to get into the curves of the uh, side of the dresser here, and it was just bending to the form of the wood, which was so nice, so, so nice. Um, but yeah, saved myself a lot of hand sanding with this sander pad here.
finally, we are done with the bulk of the sanding, and now we get to move on to more sanding. And more. And more. And more. And, well, you know, this isn't sanding, but it might as well be. These little card scrapers are amazing. Again, I will include the link below for these guys. They are so cool, and this just ate through the finish in the corners that I wasn't able to get to, and it saved me so much time, and honestly, it saved my forearms and hands like nobody's business. And look how good that looks! For little tiny crevices like this, I use this little carving tool, and again, I will put it in the description. Uh, it's from a wood whittling kit, and you just scrape off, you know, the surface area of the wood, and it helps get up all of that extra stain and finish that you, you know, can't get up with um, a sander, and it honestly, it was just so much to, to hand sand. I... I was running out of juice really quickly, but once I was finished getting up all of the little pieces of stain here and there and the pieces of finish, I went over the entire thing with 300 grit sandpaper so that the whole surface would be nice and smooth. With these materials, I am hoping to make my own wood filler. I've seen so many people do this and use, you know, uh, glue and sawdust from their sander, and I, I thought I'd try it. Unfortunately, it didn't work out for me, but um, I promise you, I have seen it work. I have seen people do this, and it's a great alternative for uh, wood filler. Um, this is how mine turned out. It turned out looking really, really dark, and uh, it was solid as a rock. So if you guys have any tips for me or saw me doing something wrong, please let me know. I would love to make my own wood filler. And as you can see, there was some space in between the sides of the dresser, and I wanted to just fix that up and tighten those up. So I went in with some glue and put it into the gaps where um, the dowels were holding it together. And then I went in and clamped it all together so that it would just be nice and tight and snug. It required a couple of taps from my good old mallet here to get it really tight, but after that we were good to go and those gaps were no more. After everything was all set, I went in there for a last quick vacuum to get up all of the sawdust that was left behind by my sander, and then I got to applying my finish. So this is a wax and oil finish that I'm going to be applying here, and it's from Melange Paint. And as you can see, I'm not using any stain whatsoever, and I'm getting the absolutely most beautiful color from this wood and it's its natural color so it's just that rich rich walnut and I honestly much prefer this over stain because one it smells way better than stain two you're not using any manufactured chemical based stain you are using just a wax and oil product and you're not changing the color of the wood at all this is its natural color and you're just enhancing it and bringing it out which i absolutely love and as far as like lasting and whatnot sure it does last a little less time than polyurethane and whatnot and you do have to go in and give it coats every once in a while, but this baby is going to last a long, long time with this wax finish, and honestly, I love it. So when you go in for your first coat, you want to let it sit there for a little bit just to soak in and really set onto the furniture, and then when you're done with your first coat and letting it sit, you want to wipe all of the excess off. That way you're not getting any, you know, uh, lines or streaks from your um, wiping it on. And I like to apply mine with a soft wool sponge. And this just really helps get it into the wood grain and just really soak into that wood. And once you're done wiping off all of the excess, you want to let it dry and cure for about 24 hours before you apply your next coat. And I like to do a total of three coats of wax for the entire piece. Piece. 
So another way to reuse materials from old projects is to save screws, and these sizes just happen to be exactly what I was looking for. So I attached the backing onto the piece by just drilling them into all corners, and we were good to go. For cleaning hardware, I use a combination of water and Barkeeper's Friend, and usually I use a steel wool sponge, but I didn't have one on hand, so I just used a soft steel wool sponge instead, and this worked great, honestly. But I have also heard that baking soda is a good sub substitution for Barkeeper's Friend. I haven't ever tried it though. If you have, please let me know in the comments. I would love to hear your thoughts. Also, if you know of any other eco-friendly ways to clean hardware, I would love to implement that into my process of flipping furniture. So if you can leave that in the comments as well, I would really, really appreciate it. You guys are awesome. Before I go and show you guys the finished product, I just want to say thank you so much for watching this video and that I hope you take these eco-friendly tips and apply them to your own flipping. And if you're interested in learning more about being eco-friendly, please make sure to check out the link below for the playlist of my eco-friendly challenge. There are so many amazing flippers in this challenge, so please make sure to go check them out. And uh, yeah, anyways, thanks again. Uh, make sure to like and, and subscribe and hit that notification bell and, you know, do all those things so that we can stay a happy flipping family. Anyways, stay flipping, guys.